It was just basically saying that, uh, you know, she, he found out that she was a, a alleged worker for Diddy, her in Young Miami, which is crazy to me. With Summer Diddy, why y'all not together no more? Um, because, like, he was, you know, he was f***ing up, he wasn't ready, and I was trying to be a woman, and... Are you a cheater? No, I used to be a cheater. I'm not a cheater no more. Used to be. I'm a, I'm a truth teller now. You are honest. Diddy's scenario continues to unravel as a never-ending drama filled with a constant change of individuals implicated. With each passing day, more individuals find themselves connected to Diddy's legal battles. The most recent person caught up in this mix is Young Miami, surprising many with her involvement. Despite her efforts to dissociate herself from these matters, Young Miami is now deeply intertwined in the controversy, introducing a new level of intricacy to Diddy's case. City Girls rapper Young Miami. Now, these two have been on and off for a while. Just two weeks ago, Young Miami said, that's not my man. Sean Diddy Combs' ex-partner, Young Miami, finds herself involved in his legal challenges, accused of moving contraband on his behalf. Court filings made on Monday have brought to light allegations that Katia Romea Brownlee was involved in transporting a substance known as Pink C for Combs back in April. These allegations have now been incorporated into the existing $30 million lawsuit initiated by Rodney Jones Jr., the music producer known is Lil Rod against Combs in February. It is a gripping story. Producer Lil Rod, whose given name is Rodney Jones, has now accused Sean Diddy Combs of operating a racketeering enterprise. This tale's got everyone hooked. Producer L. Rod, real name Rodney Jones, is laying heavy accusations on Sean Diddy Combs, claiming Diddy's deep in running a racketeering operation. The latest scoop, extending Jones's legal claim by 25 pages this Monday and spotlighted by The Hollywood Reporter, points the finger at Diddy for having a thing for this specific blend dubbed Pink C, 2CB or 2CB. Described in the lawsuit, this mix, known as phenethylamine 2CB, is like a mashup of ecstasy and LSD. Diddy supposed to have gotten his hands on these goods through Brendan Paul, his go-to guy for such errands, who got busted recently. But with Brendan out of the picture, Diddy supposedly turned to Brownlee as his new connect, as detailed in the updates Jones made to the lawsuit, first brought to light by XXL Magazine last Thursday. The lawsuit's details hint at practice sessions, likely prep work for the Something in the Water Fest in April 2023, thrown together by Pharrell Williams down in Virginia Beach. Diddy was expected to hit the stage with Pharrell at this bash, according to the lawsuit, as shared by the publication, Plaintiff and the Combs Rico Enterprise were getting ready for the Something in the Water Festival in Virginia. It goes on, revealing Jones caught a glimpse of Mr. Combs lining up some coke in his dressing room. Sean Combs was after Tusibi, but Brendan dropped the ball, so Christina Coram dialed Young Miami, who flew it in on a private jet from Miami. The lawsuit is throwing some heavy accusations, claiming this big-time player in both the fashion and music scenes was way out of line while the plaintiff was working on his latest tracks between September and November 2022. It's said that Diddy got way too personal, making unwanted moves by touching him inappropriately, trying to push him into intimate situations he wasn't about. On top of that, the paperwork is stating that Jones was pushed into getting workers involved and then forced into acts with them he didn't consent to. He's also calling out that he had to deal with more unwanted moves, this time from actor Cuba Gooding Jr. and some others. Jones is also saying he was drugged, waking up all messed up in February 2023 next to Combs and a couple of workers. And that says NBC is learning exclusively that the music producer accusing Diddy of is also accusing actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Now, Lil Rod's got more to say about some shady moments with Diddy, including a time Diddy tried to get him to take some stuff he wasn't trying to mess with at all. But hold up, the story's got more layers. Young Miami's name keeps popping up in this legal drama, too. At one point, Lil Rod caught Diddy and Young Miami together getting high. Then things got real serious when Young Miami's cousin, who supposedly works for Diddy, forced Lil Rod into a situation he didn't sign up for, happening in a Miami bathroom on November 23rd, 2020. 22, all laid out in the legal docs. This whole mess has Lil Rod feeling all kinds of troubled over what went down. Young Miami, who's got ties to Diddy's ex, is now caught up in some court drama. Lil Rod is claiming she had a part in some beef, pointing the finger at Diddy for setting it up. The court papers are saying Young Miami's cousin was making moves on Lil Rod right in front of Diddy and his crew. The way the court files tell it, Mr. Combs, who was supposedly buzzed, tried to pass something off to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones wasn't having it and dipped to the bathroom. 
That's when young Miami's cousin comes busting in and starts getting handsy with Mr. Jones. He's sure that Mr. Combs had her do this. She didn't waste no time getting inappropriate with Mr. Jones in the bathroom. Mr. Jones wasn't playing that, pushed her off, and made his exit. Now, on to Diddy, there's talk about him possibly drugging Usher. This chatter online keeps suggesting that Sean Diddy Combs might have passed an STD to Usher Raymond back when he was just 15. Where all this talk comes from is a bit murky, but it might be tied back to Usher saying Diddy used to take him to some wild parties back in his young days. And you're gonna go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and f***ing like nonstop, right? There ain't no solid proof that Diddy handed off any STDs to Usher or that there was any kind of intimate dealings between them. Usher's been tangled up in his own legal mess, accused of giving partners herpes, but he's been straight denying it and settling most of that stuff outside court. On the subject of Diddy, ain't no word out there about what's going on with him and Usher. Diddy's had his own share of troubles, like that nightclub shooting back in 99 and the time he got into it with his son's football coach in 2015. Now, in this hefty 70-page lawsuit Jones dropped, he's accusing Combs of trying to pressure him into some deep, risky business, something he's saying ain't unusual in the music game, with lawyer Tyrone Blackburn backing him. Jones is also throwing out there the idea of a RICO enterprise that didn't keep an eye on, warn, or manage Combs right. This whole alleged scheme is said to involve some big names in the music world. That means folks like Universal Music Group's top dog Sir Lucian Grange, former Motown head Ethiopia Habtamarium, Diddy, his right hand Christina Corum, and Diddy's 30-year-old son Justin all find themselves named in this legal action. This lawsuit, filled with photos for proof, argues that during his time working with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones got pulled into and had to deal with a bunch of stuff that went way beyond just making beats for the Love album. It's laid out that Combs was on Mr. Jones non-stop to record, leading to Mr. Jones racking up hundreds of hours of tapes and recordings that catch Combs' crew and visitors in the middle of some real illegal mess. In the face of these heavy accusations against Combs, lawyer Shan Hawley came out swinging with a public statement, calling Lil Rod's claims nothing but hot air, driven by the desire for a big payday. Hawley, rolling deep with the law firm Kenela Hawley Weiser & Steiner LLP, clapped back saying Lil Rod is out here trying to score a third in million jackpot with a lawsuit packet with make-believe tales. Holly made it clear they got a whole lot of proof that's gonna shut down Lil Rod's story, promising to bring the truth out in court and go after anybody tossing around lies. But here's what Fox News had to say. Rye Jones's lawsuit is pointing out that, according to him, Diddy's got cameras and mics all over his many cribs. I Justin Combs stepped up with a straight up no to all that talk, speaking for him and his pops through a rep. He said all those accusations are straight bogus and hinted at coming back hard at anyone trying to tarnish the Combs family name with lies. Things get even more twisted, as Lil Rod keeps on saying that Diddy was bragging about close ties with big names, including Stevie J, who's known for his moves in the music game. The lawsuit says Diddy told Lil Rod about getting close with a rapper, an R&B singer, and Stevie J himself. Man, the drama around Diddy just keeps on building. In the lawsuit, there are two big names in the entertainment world kept under wraps, dropping just enough hints to keep us guessing. One, called The Rapper, is known for having dated Nicki Minaj. The other, the R&B singer, got props for a Super Bowl show and snagging a sweet deal for a Vegas residency. With all the whispering about who's who in these court papers, eyes are on two heavy hitters in the biz. The rapper seems to be Meek Mill, especially with folks remembering him and Nicki Minaj calling it quits back in 2017, and then the R&B singer looks to be Usher, what with his recent Vegas gig announcement and his Super Bowl LV1 performance on February 11th. I Meek Mill straight up said nope to all that talk about him and Diddy being more than just bros, and got real heated on Twitter with DJ Akad who's been stirring the pot on this whole thing online. Even with Meek shutting it down, folks are still whispering. Some even dug up an old clip where Nicki Minaj hit up Soulja Boy, asking him about closeted guys in the game, making folks wonder if she knew something about Meek and Diddy. Soulja Boy's look in that video got people thinking he might know something too. DJ Academic seemed shook by the rumor mill spinning about Meek and Diddy. He was all like, yo Meek, we were just messing with that Michael Rubin stuff, but man, you gotta clear this up. You out here on Twitter talking about everything under the sun, he said. If you don't drop a tweet storm about going after Lil Rod, talking about doing something wild, this is gonna stay sticking to you and Diddy being more than just friends. What the hell? Meek clapped back at Academics, but didn't really get into whether there's any truth to what's being said in the lawsuit. Dropping new music, he suggested people are just trying to mess with his moment. You coming at me hard right now, Meek said. I'm just laughing thinking about running into Academics for real. They know my music drops tomorrow, and here they come trying to mess with me. The internet's getting too strange for me. 
He kept at it with more tweets throwing shade at academics, clearly not feeling the accusations, but not giving a straight answer about the lawsuit either. Academics, how many times I gotta tell you to quit messing with my name? He said, I don't know what's gonna happen when we finally meet, but it's definitely gonna be something. Academics, sitting there drunk, getting played by the system. Who you think is spreading this all over the net? They're so heated today thinking they can mess with us, lol. Academics came through, pointing out that Meek hadn't straight up said those accusations were false. Meek, feeling over it, then mentioned he was going through it. This dude is losing it, a producer hit him up saying, he's snapping on everyone but ain't addressing the real, and then said he just made that stuff up. As things heated up, another big name online, Andrew Tate, stepped in with a direct ask if Meek and Usher had been getting close with Diddy. So P. Diddy was getting personal with Meek Mill and Usher, he asked? Meek clapped back at Tate, calling out Tate's big 2023 mess with those charges about assault. You caught up in that mess? What's wrong with you, man? Meek shot back. I'm just asking since everybody's talking, Tate hit back. Is it true? But Meek didn't say anything after that. Meek was hitting at those serious accusations against Tate in Romania, about him running a group for the purpose of mistreating women. Tate's been denying all that from the jump. Lately, Diddy's been facing a bunch of legal heat with a standout case from his ex-singer Cassandra Cassie Ventura. In her lawsuit, Ventura laid out a story of mistreatment, violence, and wild living under Combs. She claimed Combs dragged her into a flashy, fast life, filled with forced situations with men, threats, and physical harm. Ventura's case got settled real quick, just a day after she filed it in November. Through all this, Combs kept denying everything thrown his way. His lawyer, Ben Braffman, made it clear to Newsweek then, Mr. Combs absolutely denies these serious and hurtful allegations. In Cassie's legal battle, she laid it all out, saying Diddy made her get down with multiple dudes while he just sat back, watched, and even recorded the whole thing. They called these sessions freakouts in the lawsuit, saying this stuff went down in fancy hotel rooms, like over at Trump International in NYC. One big piece of the lawsuit is about Diddy telling Cassie to kick it with male escorts for his own kick. She was supposedly told to use oil and get intimate with a bunch of guys, sometimes rocking masks and costumes. It was like, so you think Diddy was into watching Jay, another dude? Must be, because they were all up in that room, right? True, it's a whole freak off. That's what the lawsuit is hinting at. The lawsuit spills that Diddy, who Cassie met when she was just a youngin', said he'd be turned on watching her with another man. Dude allegedly got a guy over to his spot in LA for Cassie to get intimate with. While Diddy watched the whole thing go down, he was directing Cassie and the guy on what to do, making this go on for days. Cassie's saying there was this one time in March 2016, Diddy got lit, hit her, giving her a black eye. She tried dipping out the hotel room while he was knocked out, but he woke up, started tripping, grabbing her, throwing vases and stuff, making a mess with glass everywhere while she tried to make a break for it. She got back to her place but was shook he'd come after her when she went back. Hotel security was like, you need to bounce in a cab. After they peeped the security cam footage of Diddy going off on her and chucking glass in the hallway. All this according to her lawsuit. Cassie even said Diddy dropped 50 grand to the hotel staff to get that security tape from that night. Back in 2013, Cassie says Diddy set up another one of these freak offs, causing mad damage to the hotel. She was supposed to find the spot and get dudes for the session, hitting up websites and escort services for men fitting a certain type. Diddy wanted these meets on the regular, calling it our thing, keeping it on the low. She mentioned these freak offs would be in places like Trump International in Columbus Circle, Lermitage in Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in LA, and Intercontinental Hotels all over. Diddy's assistant was in on it, making sure they had baby oil, lubricant, and a whole lot of drugs, ecstasy, GHB, ketamine, MDMA, amphetamines, so Cassie could just zone out through these wild times. After going hard like that, it was normal for her to need IV fluids just to bounce back from all those drugs, Cassie dropped in her lawsuit that Diddy would have her lather up in oil heavy before directing her and others in some real intimate scenarios. But then, 50 Cent jumped into the mix, pointing out what he saw as holes in Cassie's story, especially on how Diddy was interacting with others in these moments. It's all kind of hazy whether Cassie's claims match up with Diddy's ties to other big names, but 50 was quick to stir the pot even more, throwing hints about Jay-Z possibly being mixed up in Diddy's drama. He was like, I gotta speak on it after that Drink Champs interview. Dude says stuff without even realizing. Sounds kinda fruity to me. Cassie's suit makes it look like Diddy was bringing in some well-known folks to these private parties, and dropping Meek Mill's name in the mix wouldn't shock nobody. Meek hit Twitter hard, shutting down any talk of him getting down like that with Diddy. He's all about doing his own thing in the game and denied any weird vibes with the music mogul. Meek pointed out, right when he's dropping his new album, Heathenism, here come these wild accusations. Despite the drama, 
Meek's standing firm, tired of the industry trying to spin tales about snitching or questioning his morals. He's calling out how these rumors try to shake up hip-hop, not feeling how folks try to mess with the flow, especially when artists are pouring money into the scene. On top of all that, Meek, also hitting the scene as Lil Rod, is pushing for a jury trial to get some justice, looking for damages but not putting a number on it yet. He's also rallying his fans, starting a GoFundMe to help with his court fight. Meek's also stepping back from the spotlight for a bit, saying, Yo, fam, until I say otherwise, I ain't hitting the stage for nothing, all cause of safety stuff. Diddy's known for linking up with big names in the rap game, and Meek's right there, known for dropping hits nonstop. With Meek gearing up to drop his latest work, fans are hyped to hear it. Their creative vibes have always been tight, sharing ideas and growing their art together. But this one clip got everyone talking, Diddy showing Meek love, calling him king and daddy, in a way that got folks side-eyeing. Meek chilling in the pool, just soaking in the love, letting Diddy know he's living it up. Diddy's like, you earned it, daddy, you putting in work. That daddy talk got some fans wondering, but Meek, he wasn't sweating it, showing he was cool with how it all went down. Yet when chatter popped up about Meek possibly being named in a new lawsuit against Diddy for some serious allegations, Meek was straight up, I'm Philly through and through. I don't mess with coke or get down with any of that wild stuff. Ain't nobody even trying me like that. If they did, the whole spot would be turned upside down. Woke up to my name all over the blogs like, oh, they knew I'd be the talk. Nah, y'all can keep that fashion and vibe to yourselves. I'm from that real hard knock life surviving where I'm from. Meek, also known as Robert Remeek Williams, let loose on X, keeping it 100 about where he stands. When someone came at Mill telling him he could keep quiet, he clapped back, I got every right to say I ain't with that and I'ma check anyone messing with my rep lol. The all eyes on you rapper went on to lay it out about his dealings with women, saying when he's got a lady around, it's on twice a day. Ain't nobody running me, but that vibe, it's like a rush. Much love to everybody, but that good good, that's what does it for me. I've sped through red just to feel that. Y'all acting brand new on here, like straight up fools lol, he let loose right after. In the mix of all this drama, 50 Cent is back on his grind, coming for Diddy with all he's got in his troll bag. Even with his usual jokes this time around, 50's not playing games, especially with all these stories stories about Diddy coming from different directions. Y'all see me? I've been at this, so I move how I want to move. With Diddy caught up in all this mess, 50's looking to stir the pot more, hinting he knows about Diddy's behind-the-scenes moves. While Cassie's lawsuit pulls back the curtain on Diddy's private parties, 50's throwing in his two cents that it wasn't just male escorts at these things. He's suggesting some top-tier rappers were in the mix, too, making the scandal even juicier. Then, DJ Academics jumps into the fray, dropping bombshells during a live stream. He's talking about a 73-page lawsuit that's got names like Meek Mill, Usher, and Diddy all tangled up, making everybody side-eye the whole situation. He didn't, it didn't mention Meek by name. Oh wait, my bad, hold up, what? I slipped. So, Mr. Combs told Mr. Jones he was involved with throwing Meek and Usher's names out there based on some shaky info adds even more layers to this whole drama. <laughs> Meek, we were just messing with that Michael Rubin stuff, but you out here tweeting about every single thing. If you don't hit up Twitter with a rant, academics spilling this tea on a live stream shows just how crucial social media and real-time chatter are in shaping what we talk about. Yet Meek's standing his ground, denying everything thrown his way. And he's got words for Kanye West, too. Posting on his IG story, Meek's reflecting, back in jail, Yiz tracks were my go-to for a boost, swear to God, he shared. Then I get out to see him trash my name and everything I stand for like it's nothing. Kept quiet, but I knew he was off. Taking shots at real ones while trying to play it cool with Boozy. It breaks my heart knowing some of y'all. This whole thing's whack and weak. I don't need no features from nobody because I've been the talk since I was 13. Justin LeBoy missed me with those bizarre get-togethers you and bro got going. In this post, calling out a video of Kanye dissing mainstream rap lyrics, Meek suggesting Yez got some internalized racism issues. He's hinting at Kanye possibly having some deep-seated biases. Chasing clout got you messed up. You came at me hard, knowing I speak up. It's like you got beef with your own. Didn't even shout out Boar's album after all he did for you. Looking up to you. Then you out here saying Jack Harlow's running Kentucky, but you sleeping on EST and Vori. Folks been making memes about Kanye, too. One said, Remember when Diddy was calling Meek Daddy in that pool video, looking like he took a hit from getting Diddy bopped? And then, there was that time they both showed up in matching fits. Another came through like, Meek, you sounding real guilty. What you should have done with them Twitter fingers was to keep quiet and let your lawyer do the talking. Then someone else jumped in. Undisputably broke it down real good. If lawyers are in on this, that means there's proof, like audio and video. It's all in the paperwork. They caught. 
people speculating why Young Miami and Diddy split, suggesting Young wanted to keep her name clear. Diddy and Young Miami first got linked up around 2021, but it wasn't until June 2022 they made it official on Young Miami's podcast, Koresha Please. They wrote out 2022 together, but by April 2023, Young Miami was out here declaring she's single. Still, they've been keeping it open since then. What's really good with their situation? $200, 50KLs ain't cutting it? Some things you see ain't worth $200. Must be some deep stuff going on. That's all for now. Peace. He basically was saying, um, he heard she was doing work for Diddy, her and Young Miami, which is wild to me. D for real, um, cause he wasn't ready and I was trying to be. You a worker? I used to be. Not no more though. I'm about that truth now. You're a straight up man. This whole thing with Diddy keeps unraveling, bringing in new names into his legal dramas every day. Young Miami getting caught up in this was a shocker for a lot of folks. She was trying to clear her name, but now she's deep in this mess. Young Miami and Diddy been on this roller coaster for a minute. Just a bit ago, Young Miami was like, he ain't my man. Diddy's ex, Young Miami, now finds herself wrapped up in his legal troubles, supposedly having moved some stuff for him. Just this Monday, new court papers came out saying Katia Romea Brownlee was moving something called Pink C for Diddy back in April. All this is tied into that big $30 million lawsuit Rodney Jones Jr., known in the music world as Lil Rod, filed against Diddy back in February. This story is heating up. L. Rod, real name Rodney Jones, is accusing Diddy of running some serious shady business. The lawsuit, now beefed up with 25 new pages on Monday and picked up by The Hollywood Reporter, claims Diddy had a thing for this stuff called Pink C, 2CB, or 2CB. This mix, known as phenethylamine 2CB, is like ecstasy, and LSD had a baby. Diddy supposedly was getting his supply from Brendan Paul, his go-to guy, who just got nabbed. But with Brendan out the picture, Diddy had to look to Brownlee to keep things moving. XXL Magazine was on this first, talking about these new details last Thursday. The lawsuit talks about rehearsals, probably getting ready for that something in the water fest in April 2023, put together by Pharrell down in Virginia Beach. Diddy was supposed to hit the stage with Pharrell. Plaintiff and the Combs Rico Enterprise were prepping for something in the water down in Virginia, according to the lawsuit. Jones caught Diddy doing lines in his dressing room. Diddy was after that to CB, but Brendan dropped the ball, so Christina Corum had young Miami fly it in on a private jet from Miami. The lawsuit is laying it all out, saying this big name in fashion and music was on him rough while he was trying to get his latest album done between September and November 2022. Diddy supposedly was getting handsy, trying to push him into stuff he wasn't about. Plus, the lawsuit says Jones was forced into getting workers and then had to do things with them. He's also talking about getting unwanted attention from Cuba Gooding Jr. and others. Jones is saying he got drugged, waking up all messed up in February 2023 next to Diddy and a couple of workers. NBC C got the exclusive that the music producer calling out Diddy is also pointing fingers at Cuba Gooding Jr. In a shocking turn of events, Lil Rod opens up about a time Diddy tried to push some stuff on him, an offer he straight up refused. But yo, that's not even the half of it with this lawsuit. Young Miami's caught up in this too. Lil Rod's lawsuit keeps bringing her name up. He talks about catching Diddy and Young Miami getting high together. Things got real bad when Young Miami's cousin, who supposedly works for Diddy, stepped into the picture. According to Lil Rod, this went down in a Miami bathroom on November 23rd, 2022, where she forced herself on him, all spelled out in the court docs. This whole mess got Lil Rod really messed up. Young Miami, who's been linked to Diddy before, is now in the middle of this legal storm. Lil Rod saying she had a hand in this mess, claiming Diddy set it all up. That's what the court papers are saying. Looks like Young Miami's cousin made a move on Lil Rod right in front of Diddy and his crew. The court papers say Diddy, probably lit, tried to get Mr. Jones to take something. Mr. Jones wasn't having it and dipped to the bathroom. That's where Young Miami's cousin barged in and started touching Mr. Jones. He's convinced Diddy put her up to it. She didn't waste no time getting out of line with Mr. Jones in that bathroom. Mr. Jones had to push her off and get out of there. And talking about Diddy, he's caught up in rumors about messing with Usher. Folks online been saying Diddy might have given Usher an STD back when he was just 15. This all might have started from Usher saying Diddy used to bring him to some wild parties back in his young days. You hitting up Puff Daddy's place? We're talking 90s, you feel me? Puffy's spot was just wall to wall with ladies, partying nonstop, right? But for real, there ain't no solid proof Diddy did anything like that to Usher. Usher's been in his own legal fights over spreading herpes, 
case, but he's been denying all that, settling most of it without going to court. On the real, Diddy hasn't said a word about all this talk with Usher. Diddy himself ain't new to legal drama, what with that nightclub shooting in 99 and going at his son's football coach in 2015. In this huge 70-page lawsuit Jones dropped, he's accusing Combs of trying to pull him into some serious stuff, saying that's just how it goes down in the music world. Represented by lawyer Tyrone Blackburn, Jones is also talking about some Ryko Enterprise stuff not keeping an eye on warning or managing Combs right. This whole alleged scheme is said to involve some big names in the music scene. That means folks like Universal Music's boss, Sir Lucian Grange, former Modown head Ethiopia Habdemarium Diddy, his main assistant Christina Corum, and Diddy's son Justin all getting named in this lawsuit. This suit, filled with pics for proof, says while working with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones had to deal with a whole lot more than just producing the Love album. It's laid out that Combs kept Mr. Jones busy recording, leading to Mr. Jones stacking up hundreds of hours of footage and recordings catching Combs' team and visitors in some real questionable stuff. In response to them, recent allegations against Combs, lawyer Sean Hawley came out swinging with a statement that's been making rounds, calling Lil Rod's claims nothing but talk, aiming for a cash grab with that $30 million lawsuit filled with tales. Holly, part of the squad at Canella, Holly, Weiser, and Steiner LLP, laid it out clear. Lil Rod is chasing a payday he doesn't deserve, all made up. Holly made it known they're sitting on a ton of proof to shut down Lil Rod's story, and they ain't about to let it slide without taking folks spreading lies to court. But. Fox News dropped this. Rye Jones's lawsuit is out here saying, according to him, Combs got cameras all over his spots. Justin Combs stepped up too, speaking for both him and his dad, straight denying everything through a spokesperson. Justin Combs made it plain. Those accusations are all way off, warning that anybody talking sideways about the Combs family is gonna face the heat legally. As Lil Rod keeps pushing that Diddy's been spilling about hookups with big names, including Stevie J from the music scene. Court papers say Diddy let slip to Lil Rod about his moments with a rapper, an R&B singer, and Stevie J. This whole thing with Diddy's just getting more tangled. The lawsuits got these hidden figures from the entertainment world, dropping hints but not names. One, the rapper, had a thing with Nicki Minaj back in the day. The other, the R&B singer, got fame for hitting up the Super Bowl stage and locking down a sweet gig in Vegas. With all the whispers, eyes are on two big shots in the game. The rapper seems to be Meek Mill, especially after him and Nicki called it quits in 2017. And the R&B singer, Looks like Usher, what with his recent Vegas deal and that Super Bowl El Valio show on February 11th. Meek Mill ain't here for any talk suggesting something went down with him and Diddy getting into it with DJ Academics Online, who's been fanning the flames. Despite Meek's shutdown, the rumor mill's buzzing. An old clip of Nicki Minaj questioning Soulja Boy about the down low scene got folks thinking maybe she knew something. Soulja Boy's reaction in that video's got people guessing he knows the scoop too. DJ Academics seemed shook at the thought of Meek and Diddy being a thing, pressing Meek to clear the air. Yo, Meek, we joked about that Michael Rubin stuff, but you gotta set this straight, he said. You out here on Twitter talking about everything. If you don't clap back on Twitter about Lil Rod saying you gonna handle business, this mess about you and Diddy is gonna stick. What's going on? Meek hit back at academics, but kept it vague on the lawsuit's truth. Dropping new music, he's hinting folks are trying to kill his vibe. How you coming at me now? Meek said. Can't wait to run into academics for real. They know my drops tomorrow. This is them trying to throw shade. This stuff's getting too weird. He didn't stop there, throwing more shade at academics. Clearly not happy with the rumors, but leaving academics' big question unanswered. Academics? Didn't I say quit messing with my name? He added. Don't know what I'll do when we meet. It's gonna be something, though. Academic. That drunk, all boosted by the system. Who you think is blasting this on every site? They're heated today, can't touch us, lol. On the flip side, academics pointed out Meek ain't fully denied those talks, talking about Meek looking stressed, later saying he's spiraling. This dude is stressed, a producer hit him up saying, he's tight with everyone but ain't addressing the real, then was like, I made that up. Then Andrew Tate jumps into the chaos, asking straight up if Meek and Usher were getting close with Diddy. P. Diddy was getting personal with Meek Mill and Usher, he asked. Meek wasn't having it with Tate, calling out Tate's notorious 2023 scandal involving assault charges. You caught up in that mess? What's wrong with you, man? Meek hit back. Just asking since everyone's talking. Tate pressed. Is it true? But after that, Meek went silent. 
Meek was shading Tate over those serious charges in Romania about him running a scheme targeting women. Tate's been denying all that from the start. Recently, Diddy's been facing a lineup of legal battles, with one notable case from his ex, singer Cassandra Cassie Ventura. In her suit, Ventura talks about a cycle of mistreatment, violence, and wild living under Combs. She said Combs pulled her into a flashy, fast life filled with forced encounters with men, threats, and physical harm. Ventura's case got settled quick, just a day after she filed in November. Through all this, Combs kept denying everything thrown his way. His lawyer, Ben Braffman, was straight up with Newsweek then. Mr. Combs absolutely denies these serious and hurtful allegations. Cassie's lawsuit went deeper, saying Combs had her getting intimate with multiple male escorts while he just watched, directed, and filmed it. They called these meetups freakouts, going down in fancy spots like the Trump International in NYC. One major claim is Combs had Cassie getting down with these dudes for his own pleasure, telling her to use oil and mix it up with a bunch of men, sometimes in masks and costumes. It's like, you think Diddy was messing with Jay, a dude? Had to be. Both of them in that room, right? True, it's a freak off. That's what the lawsuit hints at. It says, Holmes, who Cassie met when she was just starting out, told her he'd get a kick seeing her with another man. Dude supposedly hired a guy, brought him to his LA crib for Cassie to get intimate with, all while Combs watched. Combs directed Cassie and the guy on what to do, dragging this out over days. Cassie's talking about a freak off in March 2016. Diddy Lit allegedly hit her, giving her a black eye. She tried to dip out the hotel room while he was out, but he woke up, started wilding, grabbing her, snatching vases from the hall, and tossing them at her, making a mess with glass everywhere as she tried to make her escape. She got to her place but was shook he'd follow. When she went back, hotel security was like, you better take a cab. After they saw the security cam footage of Diddy going off on her and throwing glass in the hallway, all this laid out in her lawsuit. Cassie even said Diddy dropped 50 grand to the hotel staff to get that security tape from that night. After these fresh allegations against Combs hit, lawyer Sean Hawley was quick to step up, shooting down Lil Rod's claims as nothing but stories trying to get some money. Hawley, rolling deep with the law firm Canella, Holly, Weiser, and Steiner LLP laid it out straight. Lil Rod's just chasing a bag he don't deserve with a 30 million lawsuit packed with make-believe. Holly stressed they got loads of evidence to knock down Lil Rod's accusations, and they're not about to let it slide without taking folks spreading lies to court. But Fox News got into it, pointing out Rye Jones's lawsuit says, according to him, Combs got cameras and mics all over his spots. Justin Combs stepped in too, holding it down for him and his dad, straight denying everything through a spokesperson. Justin Combs was clear, all them accusations are straight bogus, hinting at coming back hard at anyone and trying to tarnish the Combs family name with lies. The lawsuit's taking twists and turns, with Lil Rod claiming Diddy's been talking about his close moments with big names, including Stevie J from the music scene. According to what's been filed, Diddy spilled to Lil Rod about getting close with a rapper, an R&B singer, and Stevie J. This whole Diddy saga's just getting wilder. The lawsuit's got these mystery celebs from the entertainment world leaving breadcrumbs, but no full names. One, dubbed The Rapper, had a past thing with Nicki Minaj. The other, The R&B Singer, is known for that Super Bowl performance and a sweet Vegas residency. With all the whispering, eyes are on two big names. The Rapper seems to be Meek Mill, especially after him and Nicki split in 2017. And The R&B Singer looks like Usher, what with his recent Vegas residency announcement and that Super Bowl LVI gig on February 11th. Meek Mill's not here for any rumors about him and Diddy, clapping back at DJ Academics online, who's been stirring the pot. Despite Meek's shutdown, the streets are still talking. A throwback clip of Nicki Minaj hitting up Soulja Boy about the down low scene got folks thinking maybe she knew something about Meek and Diddy. Soulja Boy's reaction got people thinking he might know something too. DJ Academics seemed shook by the thought of Meek and Diddy being an item, pressing Meek to clear the air. Yo Meek, we joked about that Michael Rubin stuff, but you gotta set this straight. He said, Said, you out here on Twitter talking about everything. If you don't clap back on Twitter about Lil Rod saying you gonna handle business, this mess about you and Diddy is gonna stick. What's going on? Meek hit back at academics, but kept it vague on the lawsuit's truth. Dropping new music, he's hinting folks are trying to kill his vibe. How you coming at me now? Meek said. Can't wait to run into academics for real. They know my drops tomorrow. This is them trying to throw shade. This stuff's getting too weird. He didn't stop there, throwing more shade at academics, clearly not happy with the rumors, but leaving academics big questions 
question unanswered. Academics, didn't I say quit messing with my name? He added. Don't know what I'll do when we meet. It's gonna be something though. Academic, that drunk, all boosted by the system. Who you think is blasting this on every site? They're heated today, can't touch us, LOL. On the flip side, Academics pointed out Meek ain't fully denied those talks, talking about Meek looking stressed, later saying he's spiraling. This dude is stressed, a producer hit him up saying, he's tight with everyone but ain't addressing the real, then was like, I made that up. Then Andrew Tate jumps into the chaos, asking straight up if Meek and Usher were getting close with Diddy. P. Diddy was getting personal with Meek Mill and Usher, he asked. Meek wasn't having it with Tate, calling out Tate's notorious 2023 scandal involving assault and charges. You caught up in that mess? What's wrong with you, man? Meek hit back. Just asking since everyone's talking, Tate pressed. Is it true? But after that, Meek went silent. Meek was shading Tate over those serious charges in Romania, about him running a scheme targeting women. Tate's been denying all that from the start. Recently, Diddy's been facing a lineup of legal battles, with one notable case from his ex, singer Cassandra Cassie Ventura. In her suit, Ventura talks about a cycle of mistreatment, violence, and wild living under Combs. She said Combs pulled her into a flashy, fat Past life filled with forced encounters with men, threats, and physical harm. Ventura's case got settled quick, just a day after she filed in November. Through all this, Combs kept denying everything thrown his way. His lawyer, Ben Braffman, was straight up with Newsweek then. Mr. Combs absolutely denies these serious and hurtful allegations. Cassie's lawsuit went deeper, saying Combs had her getting intimate with multiple male escorts while he just watched, directed, and filmed it. They called these meetups freakouts, going down in fancy spots like the Trump International in NYC. One major claim is Combs had Cassie getting down with these dudes for his own pleasure, telling her to use oil and mix it up with a bunch of men, sometimes in masks and costumes. It's like, you think Diddy was messing with Jay, a dude? Had to be. Both of them in that room, right? True, it's a freak off. That's what the lawsuit Sad. It says Combs, who Cassie met when she was just starting out, told her he'd get a kick seeing her with another man. Dude supposedly hired a guy, brought him to his LA crib for Cassie to get intimate with, all while Combs watched. Combs directed Cassie and the guy on what to do, dragging this out over days. Cassie's talking about a freak off in March 2016. Diddy, lit, allegedly hit her, giving her a black eye. She tried to dip out the hotel room while he was out, but he woke up, started wilding, grabbing her, snatching vases from the hall and tossing them at her, making a mess with glass everywhere as she tried to make her escape. She got to her place but was shook he'd follow. When she went back, hotel security was like, you better take a cab. After they saw the security cam footage of Diddy going off on her and throwing glass in the hallway, all this laid out in her lawsuit. Cassie even said Diddy dropped 50 grand to the hotel staff to get that security tape from that night. As we wrap up this whirlwind of allegations and drama swirling around Diddy and those in his orbit, it's clear this saga is far from over. From Young Miami's unexpected entanglement in the controversy to the serious accusations leveled against Diddy by Lil Rod and Cassie, the layers of complexity keep adding up. The narrative has not only pulled in various figures from the music industry, but has also ignited a flurry of public speculation and online discourse. Each revelation, whether it's the freak-offs, the alleged misuse of substances, or the involvement of high-profile names, paints a picture of a hidden world filled with secrets waiting to be uncovered. The legal battles, highlighted by hefty lawsuits and claims of misconduct, suggest a deeper probe into the lifestyles of some of the industry's most celebrated figures. While Diddy faces these accusations head on, with his legal team and family members refuting claims and defending his reputation, the court of public opinion remains divided. The intrigue deepens with each passing day, as fans and critics alike parse through the details, eager for the next piece of the puzzle. Amid the controversies, the resilience of those who have come forward is notable. From Meek Mill's fervent denials and engagement with the public, to Cassie's detailed recounting of her experiences, each party is seeking to make their voice heard, navigating the treacherous waters of public scrutiny and legal challenges. The use of social media platforms by figures like DJ Academics, and even the involvement of personalities such as Andrew Tate and 50 Cent further complicate the narrative, blurring the lines between personal vendettas, legal strategies, and the quest for truth. As this story continues to unfold, it serves as a reminder of the complexity 
complexities that lie beneath the surface of celebrity and success. The implications of these allegations extend beyond the individuals involved, touching on broader issues of power dynamics, consent, and the responsibility of those in positions of influence. As the legal proceedings move forward and more information comes to light, the hope is for justice to prevail, bringing closure to those affected and perhaps prompting a deeper reflection on the culture that allowed these situations to arise. For now, we watch, we wait, and we wonder what twists and turns lie ahead in the continuing saga of Diddy and the web of allegations surrounding him. The truth, as always, remains elusive, hidden within layers of legal documents, personal testimonies, and the ever-churning rumor mill of the entertainment industry.